Hello everyone. This video will be mostly for the surgeons, especially for our young colleagues who have just begun the penis enlargement and still gaining experience in this field. Of course, the patients are also free to watch. Our subject today, I have to check my notes here. Things you should do and you shouldn't do to avoid getting into trouble with patients. When it comes to penis enlargement surgery, you must avoid some certain things. If you don't follow the things that I tell you here, you will probably get yourself into trouble. Why am I so sure about this? Because we have been doing these surgeries since 2004. We do this a lot and we record these surgeries since 2011. Unfortunately, I don't have the video of the previous ones. Since we have good returns from the patients and feedbacks and complaints from the patients, I think that I'm capable of doing such a video. First of all, I was explaining this Congress while I was giving a lecture for the surgery. First thing to learn is to set the limits. This is not a miracle performance. Don't lie. I see on the internet they guarantee that the 4 centimeters enlargement is guaranteed. One thing to do as a mistake that you give promises and the second thing you give guarantee. So if you say these things, the patient will already have high expectations because they expect miraculous things. And if you say such things on top of that, they are going to think that the doctor gave me a guarantee of six centimeters of growth in penis. Then you will have problems with the patient and 90% of them will sue you. You have to set the limits very well. Elongation is around two to three centimeters. If you're not a black patient, this won't be more than five centimeters, right? They ask me that there are some patients that they have five centimeters of elongation. Of course, there are such cases, but these patients have some anatomical structures and they are suitable to have elongation of five centimeters. But you cannot promise this to everyone. When you say that you guarantee five to six centimeters of elongation, then you do this to everyone. This is wrong. If the patient's anatomy is suitable, it can be five centimeters longer. But you cannot promise to everyone. Let me give you an example. One of our professors sent me one of his relatives. Well, I was really proud. He trusted me because he was his relative. Also, I was tense, you know, I was nervous. I told to myself, man, I hope I can get it done because it was a difficult one. Anyway, we took the patient in surgery. The moment I made the incision at the bottom of the penis, I realized that the operation would be perfect. Look, this is a very interesting case. Normally, we slide down the part of the penis that goes up in front of the bone. This is how we get the elongation. But in this patient, I saw the penis coming up over the wall and then going down a little bit, then reaching out. The button inside the part of the penis draws a ring shape like this, draws a loop and extends back out like a horseshoe. That was the only patient I have ever seen this way. Actually, he has an anatomical anomaly. The tissue inside was too much. So, there was a lot to slide down there. When I saw that part, I said to myself, this case will be perfect. Apart from pulling it off, it's going to be great. And in that case, we got a really great result. It was really abnormal. How can you promise such a thing to everyone, though? That was an anomaly, and I have never seen such case again. So, it happens, of course, but you cannot promise that to everyone. The surgery has its own limits. Well, the patients, they ask us and they wonder if their penis size is normal. In Turkey, it is considered normal between 10 to 18 centimeters. 
the majority of the cases is around 11 to 15 centimeters. And this is the majority in Turkey. This is a normal penis size. The elongation is 2 to 3 centimeters when we extend them. For 3 centimeters, it needs liposuction around the penis. You collapse the surrounding tissue with liposuction. When you pull the penis out and extend it, the difference is 3 centimeters. But as I said, if there's an anomaly, if there's an infrastructure which is suitable for such extension, it reaches to 5 centimeters. But this is not for everyone. What we can promise in general is 2 to 3 centimeters. Plus, like I said, let me add this, we don't use the word guarantee in any patient. There's no guarantee in medicine. Hope this is clear. Now, I'm looking at my notes. This was one of the things that I was going to tell you. Do not give any guarantees. Let me explain this subject, by the way. Sometimes very strange things happen in medicine. So much that you never expected in the patient. Look. As in this case, as I mentioned, there's a good situation you did not expect before, and the result is beyond your expectations. Or you reach results that is under your expectations, so you cannot guarantee anything. You might see some different results. I would like to give you an example. For instance, I had a colleague, a doctor coming from another city, he's a professor, he texted me and he said that they are carrying out a study, we are trying to keep the fat injected into the penis, that's what he said. I open up the phone, he tells me over the phone, we put this and that in order to fat to live. If I send you the details, what will you say about this? I told him, do not start this study because it's wrong, because it's basically wrong. There are a lot of studies published in the medicine literature, but they are wrong. First of all, first thing, the fat you injected into the penis should not be kept alive. The fat must not survive. It has to die. That's why we tell the patient that they must not have intercourse following the operation. The fat tissue dies within three weeks after being injected. It dies because it cannot be fat. You put 60 cc of fat tissue around 10 centimeters of penis tissue. It's a huge amount of fat for that. So it cannot survive and it dies. Unfortunately, some of our friends try to keep the fat alive as a reflex. However, fat is not supposed to live there. Why am I so sure? Because I've seen some cases where all of the fat got hold and lived. Two of my own cases had completely got hold. Is this possible? Actually not. I didn't understand how much fat got hold up there. I mean, look, sometimes impossible things happen. I saw how it would be when all the fat got hold in two patients. It's really bad. It's not something that you want. But in some centers, some experts make an effort to keep the fat alive. So there are some published articles. In fact, I put one of those articles on penisjerahisi.com in the article section. There are lots of articles I criticize there, published through the world. It's in the literature, but it's wrong. Wrong. The whole thing is wrong. Fat should not survive. But as I said, I saw that in two of my patients, fat was fully alive. I know the result, it is bad. So I say, don't do such a study on this subject. The fat should not be living there. There are lots of evidence there. I'll just briefly tell you why. What was the problem with the patients? First of all, when the patient first came to me, we took his underwear down and we examined and looked. I was frozen. Let me tell you, we know that some fat may be lost in cases where we inject fat, especially if the patient is fat with vegetable oil. If the patient eats sunflower oil, corn oil, hazelnut oil, etc., etc., fat loss could occur. We are used to it. 
A patient came to me and you know what we have seen during the examination. The patient underwent surgery a year ago. The penis is two times thick. I asked, the first thing come to my mind. Did you have an operation elsewhere? No. I did not have any other operation, but I gained weight. The man gained weight within a year. Since the fat was alive, he gained weight, and in that area as well, he was swollen. It was so strange. Fat is affected by weight gain and loss. Here's why he came to me. There's a swelling on the side of the penis. He says, I want it to be removed. Gosh, it's really unusual. During the surgery, we cut out and removed the fat. When it was open, I saw the vibrant fat tissue. It was yellow, big fat tissue, blood vessels covered in between them. Not like a fibrosis tissue at all. So it's just like a layer of fat, like a belly fat as we know it. And then we sent it to pathology. They told us that it was a wen, a lipon. The fat tissue was alive and there was a tumor inside. That's a really bad thing. The third bad thing is that it was really soft. When I touched it, with my gloves, of course, and I felt it, and it was just like a cotton candy. Have you ever touched the cotton candy? You touch it once like that, and it all goes down. You don't feel it. The penis was in that consistency. So, if the fat is alive, that's what happens. That's why I'm warning you, don't try to keep the fat alive. It's a wrong idea. There is no fat on the penis anyway. Normally, there's no fat. So, take a normal person and take a biopsy of the penis and examine it. There will be no fat tissue. You know why? Because it does not exist. There should be no live fat cells in there. That's how it exists in the nature. Why do we inject it? Because we want the fat not to live. We want the fat to die. That tissue will turn into fibrosis tissue and die. In general, when we give 60 cc of fat, it doesn't survive. It dies and turns into fibrosis tissue. So it gives it to penis its thickness. That's the thing. But some people do not understand the logic of this and behave with a general plastic surgery reflex. And they think that let's keep the fat alive. That's not going to happen. The things do not go that way. Of course, the things go in another way. I will make another video about this. Why do I explain this? Because you cannot give a guarantee to any patient. Listen, I did not give the fat to live. I give the fat so it dies. But something miracle happened in this case. This, this was really a miracle. Not only this kind of surgery, but in every surgery, there might be things you do not expect due to human nature. Many strange things can happen in medicine, so don't make any guarantees. I guess I made it really clear. I only use the word guarantee to explain the subject in these videos. I don't use any word such as guarantee with the patients. If the patient asks about guarantee, I say, what is that? I don't know about it. There's no such thing, not in my dictionary at least. Patients are sometimes smart and they try to get an implicit guarantee. They imply guarantee. They say something like, doctor, there will definitely be not any problems, right? They ask me like this, it will be perfect for sure, no? So they ask for a guarantee without asking, without using the word guarantee. So you should be smart. Do not give them any guarantee. Okay, what was the second step? We have been really talking a lot. What did we say to the patient in the beginning? Describe the limits of the surgery properly. What's the second step? Perform the surgery properly. It's that simple. But now, unfortunately, some clinics say we don't perform elongation surgeries like it's an accomplishment. I don't mean to offend them, but they don't understand the meaning of surgery. They don't understand the nature of it. The logic, the philosophy, nothing at all. 
The man says we don't cut the suspensory ligament, like it's a terrible thing to cut the suspensory ligament, like it will cause an earthquake or make the currency rise. No, brother, the suspensory ligament is the most innocent point of the surgery. Sorry, but you're not cutting it because you are a fool. I'm sorry. Let me say that from here, there's no harm in cutting suspensory ligament. It's not possible to have a complication. There is no nerve passing through it, no large vein passes, so it's not a risk. What kind of problem could it house? Even if you cut the suspensory ligament according to the classical technique written in the books, even if you cut it completely, even if you cut it 100%, the penis won't fall off. So this is that. The man did not even perform a single surgery. So what they are doing, they give the fat excessively. So they think that the penis will look better. Sorry, brother, but you are fool about that too. I have to tell this straight in your face. Because the penis does not get better once you inject it with excessive fat. When you inject it with excessive fat, it creates an erection problem. I used to give something like around 90 cc, but we woke up when we have some patients had erection problems. This is it. Because if you put the thick fatty tissue around the penis, it becomes harder to fill inside the penis with blood. A huge thick layer of fat surrounds it. Especially if the patient has had erection problems before the surgery. That's the thing. If the hardening is not good, you are giving 90, 100 cc of fat around the penis and hardening is stoned at. The penis is dust. No, brother, if you say, I don't do elongation, but I can at least make sure of solid thickening by injecting 100 cc of fat, they are going to be failed. It is 100% guarantee that you will have trouble with the patient. And apart from that, there's another mistake. Unfortunately, I did, I did this uh, mistake as well. Sorry, but we had this problem for two years, and we are still in Kavigat. There was no elongation, but thickening was that in an other clinic. And excuse me, but it was animal-like. Penis was like a piece of food. We told the patient, we said that we should make it thinner, and that's what we wanted to do. We would cut it just like a donor kebab and make it thinner. No, brother. The fat tissue given cannot be cut and cannot be thinned after this was not possible because the inexperienced colleagues should know this when there's a case with such an extremely thick penis so we thought it would be easy to cut and we accepted patients during the surgery we saw that the fat cannot be cut easily so we had to remove the fat then we had a lot of problems. The skin became loose, we had to remove it, the space inside was filled with blood, there was really a lot of complications, we had a lot of problems. In two years, the penis recovered after all, a little bit, but still we have problems. So, I no longer want to accept these extremely thickened wood-like penis tissues as patients. You shouldn't accept neither, because there is no such thing as thinning down. From the very beginning, you should not give excessive fat. But you know what they do? They say, I don't cut the suspensory ligament. Then he says, but we will thicken your penis vastly. And they face such problems. I don't know how to convince our colleagues about this suspensory ligament issue. I think that... They say that we do not do cut the suspensory ligament and the patient thinks that this is really cool and they say they think that uh, they don't have any problems, but this is not uh, okay. So there are several reasons for this because over the years, we have had a lot of modifications of this surgery. I think that uh, cutting the suspensory ligament completely is wrong. The classical information and the classical surgery description in the books are incorrect. Because when you cut the suspensory ligament fully, there is no support for the pelvis behind the penis. 
because while he's having a sexual intercourse, you use your hips and you have to have the penis in front of the hip. You have to have a connection. When he pushes the pelvis from the back, he has to push the penis in the front. If you cut it completely, you lose that connection. When you push the hip bone forward, the penis tissue remains idle. The penis must be attached to the pelvis in somewhere. Another problem is this. When you cut the connection completely, the penis tissue is fully separated from the bone. What's the biggest problem here? It could go under the pelvis, causing the penis to shorten. It can literally escape inside. It has to be attached to the pelvis. The classical method is wrong in the books. That's not right. The lower part of the suspensor ligament must be strong. And you have to separate it. When it's separated from above, the tissue slips out. The lower part must remain intact. There is no point in trying to prove this or working on it. It doesn't make any sense. We have been doing this for many years. This is our approach since 2010. Our patient satisfaction is quite high. I don't know. Well, I'm tired of repeating this. I'm bored of explaining it, to be honest. Patients should go to whomever they want. It doesn't bother me. It's not my problem. But as I said, they shouldn't come to us after going to the doctor who doesn't cut the suspensor ligament to make it brutally thick. We no longer accept such cases because it's a very troublesome job. Another important point is this, while informing the patient about the surgery, you need to tell them the success of this surgery depends on some factors. For instance, the fat, the structure of the fat. It's not possible to foresee this. You cannot pinpoint with a film or an x-ray or with a blood test. However, when you take the belly fat and you look at it, you examine it, then you will understand it. If the fat is watery, it is, it is liquid, it means that there will be some loss. Inside the injector, you can see the fat tissue floating in the water. You filter it out, pour it into a strainer, some of it will float away. In these patients, it is necessary that you have to tell them the fat will melt away. You need to tell this. It should be said that within six months or one year later, you need to tell them that you will going to have another fat injection. After the operation, you tell the patient how it goes. Sometimes the fat goes very well. Sometimes, on the other hand, it's really bad. For instance, two months ago, I think it was October, a patient from Moscow was with us. The fat tissue that we took was really bad. It was just like a fat through a meat grinder. You spill it into small parts and threw it into the water. The fat tissues were floating piece by piece in the injector. This is really bad. After the surgery, we asked the patient, how do you feed yourself? How is your nutrition? Where do you eat? And what type of oil do you use? This, is the, this was the question. And he answered, this completely fits with our observations. Patients using vegetable oil, they have bad fat structure. Fat becomes really bad, watery, and incurs losses. It's necessary to tell the patients this. We don't know how the fat will be coming from the belly. If it's bad, there will be some loss. Within six months or one year, you need to come back and you will have to pay extra fee. We have to inform the patient this way. And if you don't say this, if you say that you are going to do it at once, then the patient will have high expectations and there will be problems. And they will tell you that they did not know about this. Sometimes uh, they text me saying that, doctor, we are going to have it at once, right? And I answered them, no. 
this is not a guarantee. It might not be finished at once. And you are going to have extra fees. That's what it is, because this is the right way. You cannot give the guarantee to the patient that you are going to have it at once. Then you will have problems if you do this guarantee. I don't need to explain it bit by bit. This is the logical way. Another thing that I would like to warn you about, there's another thing that I would like to warn you about, is this embedded penis cases. This is a problematic issue. It's problematic. I would like to tell you this. It might not end at one single session. And you need to tell them that there might be no results at all. It could relapse and you operate them again, but then the penis could be embedded again. Because it happened to me once in one patient, there was a penis embedded case. I think we operated him for three times. And we did some extra operations as well. We did some tricks. I used all of my arsenal. I did all of my tricks and the penis remained embedded. And I told the patient, we are missing something. We are absolutely missing something. Because I tried everything that I can. I did the, all of the tricks with, that are written in the books. And I also tried new tricks, but the penis remain, remained embedded. So we checked the books and in the first paragraph, in the section describing the subject, in the first line, there was something important. There's something in the first sentence which is really important. The author says the definition of an embedded penis is the penis size is normal, but it is embedded inside. It is embedded in tissue. The guy has told about this in the first paragraph. If the penis is short and embedded, you can't get it out. That's the thing. Penis size is normal and embedded. This is the description of embedded penis. If it's short, then it's embedded. This is not embedded penis. This is short penis. And you cannot take this out. Is that clear? So you may come across such cases. When you see embedded penis cases, always be very cautious. Do not give any kind of guarantee to the patient. So you say you are going to try and take it out, but there are things to be done. But if it's a case of short penis, it can be embedded again. While getting the consent signature, you must write this in the form. This is critical. You have to explain this to the patient. Embedded penis cases are a little bit of luck. They are like a ticking bomb. If it's short, there are already no tissue which you could pull out. Whatever you do, it's not possible. You cannot take out something that is already not there. This is very important. It happened to me once with the patient. I was always successful with embedded penis cases. But with this guy, this penis definitely didn't come out. And that's why I went back to the books and read it again. And the first line of the paragraph, maybe I've overlooked, but then I understood what it is. If it's short and embedded, penis, you shouldn't operate this because there is no tissue inside that you can take out. This is very important. In such cases, you have to warn the patient. It's vital. Another crucial point is choosing the right patient so you don't face any problems. For one thing, you need to have a good communication with the patient. If they don't understand what you mean, you speak in vain. Now look, don't take it like a racism. I will make a sweeping statement. For instance, Arabic patients. I never 
had surgeries with the Arabic patients before, you know? You know why? Because Arabic patients, I cannot have communication with them. I explain them. I tell them that I'm going to give you 60 cc of fat. They tell me, hey, doctor, I want it around 100 or 150 cc of fat. They want one meters of penis. They are not reasonable. All of the Arabic patients who came to me were like this. So I can make such a generalization. I mean, 100 percent, you cannot explain anything to these men. They want the penis just as their leg. Of course, in the end, you're going to have an intercourse with women. What are you going to do with that? If we inject such amount of fat, you're not going to have any sort of erection. So we cannot make them understand this. One day, one of them looked at the monitor of the computer. I was showing him the best cases. The man said, I don't see any differences. I got really mad. Okay, then you have two options. Either you're blind, you don't see the monitor and you need to see the doctor, another doctor, or you shouldn't have this surgery. If you don't like these results, don't take this surgery. I mean, a penis like uh, big as my leg wouldn't be good. It doesn't make any sense. If you cannot communicate with the patient, don't accept them. It's very important. You take him, you take the surgery and there's limits to it. The patient will not be satisfied, obviously. They have something else in their heads. They want something fantastic. Whatever you do, you are not going to have results. You are going to have problems with that patient in the end. You are going to take risks. And apart from that, there are other types of patients. They don't accept anything. They say, I don't want this. I don't like that. I want this way, I want general, I want it to be local, I don't want to be thickening, just elongation. Anyway, they don't accept anything. They don't like anything. If we try to what, do what they say, it's going to be nonsense. We are not going to have a successful surgery. These are the necessities. Without these, surgery is not possible. This is what I say to them. For instance, if you have the only elongation, it's not going to be satisfactory. Two centimeters of elongation alone would not satisfy the patient. Fat injection should be done to the collapse at the bottom of the penis. Without these, the results would not be good. They say, no, I don't want that fat injection. I want elongation. They say, I don't want general, I want local. That's not possible. We get the fat from the whole belly. One day, we had one intern, one day, he was a medical student. At the first moment that he arrived at the clinic, we did not have any common ground with them. Whatever I said, he said the opposite. They wanted the reverse of everything I said. Lastly, he said something ridiculous. And they said that they will pay the surgery fee after the operation because they thought they wouldn't pay if they didn't like the operation but first of all we are taking some fees before the surgery i pay to the expense of the nurses there's uh, anesthesia cost there are lots of taxes so we have to undergo all of these costs so if you don't like the operation you're not going to pay me no, that's not going to happen. The cost of surgery, whatever the cost is, is collected before the surgery. That's that simple. You cannot enter the operation room without paying the surgery fee. They say, no, I'll give it after the operation. And I said, really? I'm really angry with you. I said, it's enough. Do you know about the Matrix movie? If you are watching this video, I'm talking about you. Because he lived this. I asked him if he knows the movie Matrix, there's something in Matrix. Neo doesn't accept while they are driving the car. They stop the car and they say, our way or the highway. You either come with us or you could take the highway and go your own way. This is what I mean. That's what I told the guy. You do whatever I say or goodbye. That's what I said. And he left. Some things are rules. 
You know what I mean? There is no elongation without thickening. These surgeries are performed with anesthesia. At least the anesthesia should be applied from the waist down. When you apply anesthesia from the waist down, not every part of the belly may be numb. The upper parts may not be numb. You pay the fee before the surgery. Why should I pay for the surgery myself? This is what I mean. If you cannot communicate with the patient, that patient may go to the highway. Goodbye. It's a really annoying subject, so... Anyway, I mean, in the end, what I mean is that don't let the patient take control. If you give the control to the patient, everything will be turning into a circus. Stupid things will happen. The patient has to accept some things. If they don't, they could go see some other doctors. That's it. Another group of patients is that very weak patients. Unfortunately, some patients are very weak. Unfortunately, I sadly refused a patient this week because there's no fat in his belly around his waist or on his legs. Where are we going to take the fat, brother? I mean, if I accept the patient, I, if I do it, I will try to have difficulties to find fat. There should be some fat in the patient. If there's no fat, unfortunately, you cannot have the surgery. Having fat enough around 60 cc is a must. If there's no fat on the belly, you must take it from the leg. But there are some patients uh, are on sports, they are doing fitness, they are doing special diets for that. And I think you should not accept those patients. The surgery cannot be performed without the fat. <coughs> Another unacceptable patient group is that the patients who have psychological problems. Let's say that they have schizophrenic issues, he's taking back of medicines, and you don't know what to tell to these people after the surgery. Even if you are performing a very successful surgery, you cannot know what's going on in his head if they are paranoid. You should not accept these type of patients. This is not a discrimination. The patient should have a healthy mind to be able to perceive the results of the surgery. If not, do not perform the surgery. If the patient was physical fit, so I performed the surgery and I got a nice result. But this is not the way how it works. If the patient says this is not a good result, if they cannot perceive this, no matter how successful the surgery, you are going to have problems with the patient. This is it. Don't accept like these cases. Sometimes the patients can be a doctor as well. <laughs> to be honest, the majority and more than half of these doctors have problematic, problematic cases. In other words, the fact that the patient is a doctor doesn't mean that they don't have any psychological problems. Sometimes we have experienced this. The patient seemed really normal. We we given him an appointment, but they didn't talk about the medicines they were taking for their mental issues. And during the morning of the surgery, but I felt that he was confused and the patient was changed. I thought maybe he used some pills. I asked to her mother and there was a bag of pills. And I asked them, what was them? In the end, they were all psychotic pills, schizophrenia pills. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia, but he didn't tell us. Fortunately, I noticed that and I asked his mother. And then I've seen those pills, a bag of pills for schizophrenia. And I told them that this is not possible. Please do not accept such cases. This is not correct. No matter how the result will be, the patient should be having a healthy mental state to see the results. Otherwise, you will have problems. <coughs> uh, 
one other thing that you have to do, you have to have a good communication with the patients. My cell phone is always open. I'm constantly communicating with my patients through WhatsApp, through SMS, through Messenger. We are email. Even when I go to bed, I talk with the patients who are living abroad. I swear to God, if I hear the message, I respond them. After the surgery, you need to support the patients because you will hear a lot of questions and I put them on our website. For instance, the man says, there's a swelling under the penis head. I open the bandages, the bottom of the penis had been swollen. Why is it like that? This is a very common question. You need to explain that this is not important. So where does the edema go? It goes and settles on the lowest point. It accumulates there. The penis is such a downward tissue. And the penis is there. And there's nothing to be panicked about. You should be explaining to this to the patient. Well, an hospital asked for uh, help from me. And they said, we will do penis enlargement surgeries. Can you come to our clinic? Well, then it stopped. And I realized why after that they want patients to not to know me to be honest so if the patient would have a problem and the patient recommends someone and send someone else they want him to send his friend to their hospital and the patients called the hospital complaining the bottom of my penis had is swollen after that and they called the hospital and they were not able to help these patients. So they couldn't support them. They did not let me know. Because they did not want me to get in touch with the patients directly. First reason, if the patient knows me, they will come to me directly. And the second thing is that in that time, the hospital were, was taking three times more money than I was asking from the patients. I did not know about this back then. So when the patients realized the difference and they would come to me, so they did not want the patients to communicate with me directly. So this was the case. You need to support the patients. You need to communicate constantly with the patients after the surgery. If you cannot do this support, if you cannot answer the questions of the patients, you will have problems. You need to have a direct communication with them. Patients should be reaching to you easily. As I said, my phone is always with me while I'm sleeping. At 3 a.m., 4 a.m., I receive different types of messages. Sometimes they call me at 3 a.m. at night. Let me say this. A patient is calling, a number that I don't recognize. And then I pick it up, they tell me, hey, I've seen your website, I would like to ask you one question. If you do this, I will give you a good rent. I will be angry. Do you call your friends at this time of hour, at 3 a.m., do you call your friends? Why don't you call me tomorrow? Now you screwed my sleep. I'm sorry, they say. I don't accept your apology. Don't you realize that it's the middle of the night? Please call me tomorrow and I shut the phone off. And some idiots, they make a missed call at night thinking that I will call them back. And I block them right away. This is what it is. So, to give support to patients is very important. Patients should be reaching to you anytime. And you have to be answering to them. Maybe they will tell them their problems. Maybe they will send you the WhatsApp uh, photos. Maybe you could tell them some recommendations. Maybe they, you will give them some advices. Otherwise, they are going to panic and they will think that you are not being in care of them. So it is very important. Now, I told you about something in the beginning of the video, like you may need a second fat injection in fat injection procedure. 
If the fat is bad, there are other situations that you might need fat injection. The first is retraced penises. If the penis is retraced, generally this is known as the blood penis. What is that? When there's the penis is soft, the penis can shrink too much and get smaller. Sometimes it decreases to one centimeter. The penis length is one centimeter when it is soft. This is called retraced penis. If the penis tissue can shrink so much, the penis tissue will also shrink after the injecting fat. The fat will accumulate on top of each other. So what happens? In erection, the fat on the penis becomes curved. It accumulates in some places and remains incomplete in some places. In these patients, it is necessary to make a second fat injection. It becomes very small, it shrinks, and you will have bad results. So, you need to have a second injection. Usually, it becomes better after the second injection. Another reason is that something called invisible ring deformity. I have a video called in skin problems in penis enlargements. I explained that in that video. That is usually not apparent during the examination. On examination, it looks like a normal penis. You give the fat during the operation. There is somewhere in the penis, usually right in the middle. It remains narrow there as if there is an invisible ring. You inject fat everywhere, but that point doesn't swell. There is a problem of elasticity in the skin. Even we ask the patients, we say, do you use a ring or something like that? Because there are things like rings used to make the erection last longer. None of the patients accepted using such a thing. They say they don't use this. This is probably something birth-related. In fact, you answer from the narrow point and inject fat, still does not swell. It doesn't stretch. A second fat injection must be applied in the future. It is necessary to do that, so that there is an elasticity. In these cases, a second fat injection may be required if the patient has such problems. It is necessary to explain this and these possibilities to the patient at first. There are things that maybe the patients, they do not say it and they hide it from you. So you need to discover it, unfortunately. For instance, we had a patient recently, when the patient was being hospitalized and when they were taking the uh, blood test, he asked, what are you taking? We learned this later on. And we did uh, tests and he was HIV positive. We don't accept HIV positive patients because we don't have puncture proof glues. That's why we don't accept such patients. We sent the results to the verification and this is something that you need to pay extra. So you have the results, if whether it's HIV positive or not, and the result was positive. We completed the surgeries and then we went to patient's room. We said we cancelled your surgery because you are HIV positive. He said, no doctor, I'm not HIV positive. He says, my RNA turns to out to be negative. How do you know that RNA is negative in terms of HIV? Because the patient is HIV positive. I realize that he is receiving treatment. So, the patient knows that he is positive, but he is hiding it from us. And when he is being hospitalized, he is asking, what type of tests are you doing? Because he is very clever. Listen. So, by itself that it, he's hiding this from us, it's a crime. And this is a crime, I'm telling you. It's an offense by law. If we are going to go to the court, then he's going to have a problem. Other than that, he knows that he's RNA negative. He's aware of his HIV positivity. He's hiding it from us. Then, we collected the cost of the verification test from the patient and he said, why do I have to pay this? You have to pay because you hid this from us. 
we did this test because we had to. You had to inform me just in the beginning. You had to tell me about this. We wouldn't give you any appointment if we had known this. Do you know what I mean? There would be no need for such expenses. It was a hustle for all of us. And he's asking, why do I need to pay? Because you are the reason. It's that simple. We are taking the fees, the costs and the expenses from you. This is one case. And apart from that, and the patient was like that, he had too much fat injected to his penis in another clinic and the penis became very thick. We said that we will not perform thinning procedure on this because we had other types of problems before while thinning. We could try. We told the patient we could only make the elongation so it looks natural. We had a lot of operations. He was not satisfied with the results during the summer. He was not happy with it. And during uh, September, he came to us and he told us he was going to marry a virgin girl. And he said that, how is it going to be have as such a thick penis? If you told me that, we wouldn't have has surgery on that. We, we did not promise you to have a thinning. I did not know about the virgin woman. This is your problem. You know what I mean? Patients may hide such information from you. Some way you need to observe this, you need to ask correct questions, and you need to undercover these issues. It's a really hard work, unfortunately, but you have to do this. There's no other choice. If you follow my suggestions, you are going to be successful. I mean, these warnings, these recommendations are actually very refined outcomes of 16 years of experience. These are really serious issues. So you need to remind, remember them. So keep them in mind, basically. One of my suggestions is something that I should have said in the beginning. I forgot about it. In cases of penis enlargements, the penis length should be at least 9 to 10 centimeters. Actually, 10 centimeters minimum. Look, we don't take measurements in surgeries because I explained why we do not take the measurements in another video. But when it comes to length of the penis, there's this criteria. Let's say if it's less than 10 centimeters erected, we are not going to take good results at the surgery because there is no elongation, because you cannot make anything. If it's more than 10 centimeters, you can get results. As uh, in the article that I wrote in Milliet, the newspaper, I explained to whom I could do this and to whom I cannot. Why is it 10 centimeters? Because this penis length in these patients is just below the normal limits. But they're also on the limit to get results. So they're on the limit. I suggest these patients to have surgery and take their chances because there's no other way. Because they are at the lower limit of normal. Even if you increase a 10 centimeter penis to 11 to 11.5 centimeters, it helps the patient. And when you do the thickening. But if it's around 9, 8, seven centimeters, you are not going to benefit from elongation. Only thickening can be performed on these patients. This is my recommendation. Among all of these recommendations, mostly you do not give the control to the patient. Look, uh, I've been working privately for 20 years. I got my degree at 2000. And the number one rule I've learned in all these years, number one rule is the most important thing is that you should never give the control to the patient. Patients want to take control. You know what happens when you give the steering wheel to a kid in a fast-moving car? Hit the wall, that's it. 
giving control to the patient is the same for surgical matters. This patient says, I don't want this, let's do this, let's do that. But he's not an expert, he's a patient. He wants what he wants. No, brother, it has to be like this. This needs to be like that. You need to explain it. You will tell these to the patients because there are some needs in terms of medicine. You have to follow the medical requirements. Otherwise, the patients want so many things. Let me give you a simple example. The patient says, doctor, I don't have much time. He says, I will come in the morning, I will be examined, I will have the surgery, and in the afternoon, I want to go back home. Look, an experienced doctor could say yes, because he will earn money and the patient is there. He'll say, okay, let's do it. We will have the surgery in the afternoon and we'll let send you. If there are any problems, if the patient has problems, he will sue the doctor. Shall I tell you what they will say at first? He operated us the same day they examined me. He did not inform me properly. I swear that he would sue the doctor this way. This is how I approach the patients. Even my relatives, the people I know, the former patients. Doctor, our patients want to come right away and have the surgery. You know how I reply them? No, there's no way, because it's not legal. The patient needs to come and get examined at least one day before the surgery. As I said before, if you give the control to the patient, each and every point that you miss, they are going to use it against you. This is the most important lesson that I learned in my experience. So don't do what the patient says. This is much more important than earning money because you are not going to have bad issues after that. You are not going to have bad experience after that. There are some regulations on that. The patient needs to be examined at least one day before to the surgery. If you do the what patient says exactly, then they are going to use these things against you in the end. Recently, a patient came. He was very detailed. It was, he was like three weeks ago that he had a surgery. He had lots of uh, swollen parts. There were lots of strures. And I asked him, how many days has it been? And he was really angry. He said, you did not inform me enough. I swear I will knock you down. That's what I said. Look, I'm talking with patients two hours in my clinic. Two hours. I used to talk even longer before. I always inform the patient on the subject. I'm explaining and informing about everything I mentioned in this video. I tell them to watch my videos. This video, I have seven, video, seven hours of videos in, on the internet. It is divided into subjects. You can open it up, listen, watch any topic, and I write articles in newspaper milliet. And we meet at the clinic, I inform you. And if he tells me that I don't tell everything detailedly to him, they will make me very angry. I became very upset with this patient. So my advice to the surgeon friends, to my colleagues, especially the ones who are not experienced, you should not invent new things. You should never give the control to the patients. There are some medical requirements. There are some rules, principles, and laws. You should follow these. Stick to these rules very strictly. Otherwise, every point where you deviate from these rules, things will turn against you. This video was mostly aimed at other surgeon colleagues, as I said. Let them watch this. They should let every sentence be a lesson to them. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in other videos.